Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. Welcome to another video in Mastering DP500 exam series. Today I will show you how you can troubleshoot any, literally any DAX query in just three simple steps. Before we start, uh, I want to tell you that this is not a deep dive uh, video about DAX. The main purpose of this uh, video is to show you and to help you get familiar with various tools for troubleshooting your DAX queries performance. If you want to learn and understand the DAX language, I share with you the list of my go-to resources in the description of this video to help you get on track. Stay tuned! In one of the previous videos of this series, we introduced a built-in feature in Power BI which is called Performance Analyzer. And this tool can help you to understand different metrics behind your report page performance and quickly identify potential bottlenecks. However, Performance Analyzer is more than that. It also offers you a possibility to grab the DAX query generated to populate the certain visual and then leverage additional tools to troubleshoot that query. So let me show you my common wor workflow when troubleshooting poor, Power BI, poor performing Power BI report. Uh, Power BI report. The first step is to run Performance Analyzer in Power BI Desktop. Okay, so let me show you uh, the first thing you need to do is understand what you need to troubleshoot. And that's the first question when you're dealing with poor report performance. What should I troubleshoot? And that's a fair question. Here, Performance Analyzer may help you to identify the main issue, which should then be investigated in more depth. Uh, to illustrate, I want to show you a simple report page with three visual elements on it, two simple card visuals and one table visual. Uh, the base metric is the total number of orders, while I'm also interested to see how many big orders my customers placed. What is a big order? Every order where the sales amount is greater than 500. So here is the measure definition uh, that I'm using to calculate a total number of orders with sales amount greater than 500. And you will realize very soon why I add this bed to the measure name. And this is how my report page looks. So let's go and turn on performance analyzer and how and see how this report performs. So I'll go to uh, view tab and turn on performance analyzer, start recording and refresh my visuals. So you see that those two cards were already rendered. For the table visual, uh, we need to wait. Let's see how long should we wait. Okay, so it finished. It's 11.4 seconds. So 11.4 seconds. And if I expand this, you can see that DAX query took almost all the time. Remember from one of the previous videos where uh, other was the issue? In this case, there is no problems with other. And that means that our enemy is probably the DAX query. I've intentionally used the word probably, as it may happen that your data set is simply too large. So even though your DAX code is optimal, the engine simply requires more time to scan the data and retrieve results. However, in this case, my table has, I would say, only 12.6 million rows, which is nothing special in terms of volume uh, for the Vertipack database. So we made a very important first step in the troubleshooting workflow we identified the most problematic query. Therefore, we will forget about the card visuals at this moment and switch our focus to understanding why this table visual is so slow. And here we go with step number two, and that's capture query plan and analyze with DAX Studio. So once we identify the problematic element, uh, we can go and copy the query behind uh, uh, that was generated to populate that specific visual. I will now move on to DAX Studio, a fantastic free tool developed by Darren Gosbell. And this tool, I would say, is a must have in your Power BI development tool belt. And I won't waste much time describing all the amazing features and capabilities of the DAX Studio in this video. The goal here is to show you how to leverage DAX Studio for troubleshooting DAX performance. So first thing I'm going to do is, uh, in order to be able to troubleshoot my query, is get more details about it. Therefore, I will turn on query plan and server timings options uh, to start tracing my query. And the next step is to paste the query capture from performance analyzer in the main window of Tech Studio. Okay, so I will now 
clear cache and run this query and let's wait for a few moments for query to execute. So it still runs, you can follow in the bottom right corner and query batch completed. So first thing I'm going to do is to go to server timing step. Here I can see different metrics. So let me stop for a few seconds and explain the key properties of the server timing step. Total shows the total query uh, duration in milliseconds. In other words, you see that our query took, let's say 11.3 seconds to execute. Uh, SECPU means amount of CPU time spent on storage engine queries. As storage engine works in a multi-threaded way, it's able to achieve a certain degree of parallelism uh, when running the queries. In our case, the query spent a total of uh, 77 seconds of CPU time. Uh, SE and FE, uh, this is time split between storage engine and formula engine. This play both as a number value and as a percentage. And finally, SE queries means the number of storage engine queries. So let's quickly review our specific calculation here. As you may notice, there are a whole bunch of queries in the central area of the server timing step. And each of them is quite fast, takes around 10 milliseconds or even less than that. But the problem is that there are many of them. To be completely accurate, uh, there are 1099 queries. When you multiply 1099 queries with approximately 10 milliseconds each, you get our let's say 11.3 seconds in total. The main issue in this case is my inappropriate usage of the filter function within the DAX formula used to calculate the total number of big orders. So let me go back to uh, Power BI Desktop and go back to uh, measure definition. Uh, basically, filter function accepts two types of objects as a first argument, table or column. If you pass the whole table as an argument, especially if the table is large, that means that storage engine will have to scan and materialize a lot of data. Like in my case, where I have a separate query running for every single date. Now, because the only criteria in my calculation is based on the single column value, uh, and that is the sales amount value, instead of passing the whole tab table as an argument, I can rewrite my calculation to apply filtering based only on one certain column. So let me grab this measure definition and I'll create a new measure in Power BI Desktop. This is my measure definition. I need to change the table name and in all the other uh, functions also. So let's do it here and let's do it here. Okay, and run this one. So the difference between those two formulas is really subtle, but yet significant. In both cases, calculation logic is the same, but different usage of the filter function may have a huge impact on the query performance. Uh, and unlike in the first definition, this time I'll be using a filter function in conjunction with the all function. All function will first remove all the active filters from the sales amount column. And after it's done, I will then apply the filter I need to keep only those rows where sales amount is greater than 500. But this time, instead of putting in the scope whole table, I'm operating on a single column level. So let me create another table. I will just copy this one. And here, instead of total, uh, let me first stop performance analyzer for a moment. And I will put my total big orders good measure. So you see that numbers are matching. And let's now again run performance analyzer and compare uh, the performance of these two visuals. So you see that the good table executed in 227 milliseconds, the one uh, with the bad guy still runs. So I'll grab the query from this table and put it here, clear cache and run. So in this case, it took less than a one third of the second. And that's a huge difference. Additionally, we can confirm that results are exactly the same across both tables. Okay, so in this time, instead of 1099 storage engine queries, we have only three. Uh, two of them are calculating totals. 
and instead of 75 seconds of storage engine CPU time, it's now only 1.5 seconds. Finally, total query execution time went down from 11.3 seconds to 293 milliseconds. Uh, in addition to the server timing step, uh, let me just expand this a little bit. Uh, you may also want to examine the query plan tab. Here you can check the actual physical and logical query plan. Understanding query plans are out of the scope of this video as this is a really complex and challenging process even for seasoned Power BI professionals. However, it can be very helpful when you're trying to understand various steps performed by the formula engine in translating your DAX code to a sequence of physical operations that should be performed by the storage engine. Keep in mind that a physical query plan doesn't necessarily have to follow uh, the order of steps defined in the logical plan. Now, this example wasn't necessarily introduced uh, to explain how to optimize DAX formulas, even though it, it certainly doesn't hurt if you learn something in that regard too. I just wanted to show you how to leverage DAX Studio and its amazing built-in features such as server timings and query plan to understand the details about the process of data retrieval for your visuals. To conclude, troubleshooting DAX queries is one of the most challenging tasks when you are working with Power BI. However, at the same time, this is the area where you can achieve the most significant performance improvements. That's all folks. If you enjoyed this video, please click this like button down below. Additionally, if you enjoy learning about data and Power BI topics, please consider subscribing to Data Monster channel. See you soon.